The engine we're working on today is an FB25 out of this 2011 Subaru Forester. The FB engine series was used in the Foresters, the Outbacks, the Crosstracks, and most of the Subaru lineup. Now the valve adjustment on this engine is not going to be done just for regular maintenance. There's way too much work involved to do this just because. Now in the case of our engine, we are here due to a misfire in cylinder number one due to a burned exhaust valve. You'll see that the valve sealing surface is very caked up on this one. This is due to this engine having consumed oil for a very long period of time. So make sure you do something about the oil consumption. We opted to install a new short block from Subaru. Okay, the components you're gonna be working with are the cam carrier housing, the camshafts, the rocker arms, the valves and the valve shims, and then on this side you have, I guess we'll call it a lifter, but it's more or less just a pivot point. And then we're going to have our cam bearing caps. These are all these components uh, sitting on the bench. Now these rocker pivots look like a hydraulic valve lash adjuster, but this is just one solid piece. And these slide right in here. You'll notice that we have our cam carrier base bolted down. Uh, this is torqued down and siliconed in place with silicone applied to the proper places to provide sealing. The torque spec on this is 160 inch pounds. And now we get to the valve adjustment part of things. This is when we install our valve shims. Now, if you put all your valve shims back in the exact same place and you didn't do any work on the valves, you should not have to adjust the valves. Everything should go in line and you'll be just fine. In our case, we've done a valve job on this engine. Um, everything's gonna be out of adjustment here. So each of these little tiny shims has a number on it. This has the number 210 on it and that means that this shim is 2.10 millimeters thick. Now not knowing where any of these are going to end up we're just going to put um, old shims uh, from our one we took apart on all of these and put it together and then we'll take our initial adjustments. In order to calculate what size shim we're going to need and the final installation, we need to write down what size of shim we put on each valve. So I do a Drew diagram of this head with a box for each valve, and I'm going to write down the size of the shim used on each. Our first shim was a 210, so I'm writing 210 right here in this box. Second shim is a 215, so we're gonna write 215 in this box. With all of our shims installed and recorded, uh, we're ready to assemble the head. You want your camshafts installed in a neutral position so both cams have plenty of room to roll. The nice thing about a Subaru engine is that the engine is timed at center dead center, meaning all of the pistons are halfway down. So even if we rotate these cams all the way around and open valves, we can't bend valves in the position that we have the uh, block in. It's critical that all your caps are returned to the same position that they started in. They do have intake with a forward facing arrow stamped on here. I usually make some marks of my own just to make sure. And we'll put these all together. And we're going to torque these down. I am not putting silicone on them at this time because we are probably going to be taking these back apart. The spec for these is also 160 inch pounds. It is now time to measure our valve clearance. It is worth your time to get a set of feeler gauge that is stepped in metric increments. You can use a SAE feeler gauge set um, because they do have the metric markings on them, but the metric markings are stepped in uneven increments and it makes it a little more difficult to do your math to determine the final size. We are going to take our measurement between the cam and the roller right here. So we are going to find the feeler gauge that best fits that gap. We're looking at intake valves right now. The spec for the intake valves is 0.13 millimeters plus or minus 0.03. So 0.10 to 0.16. On the exhaust valves, the spec is 0.24 plus or minus 0.03. So that means we can be from 0.21 to 0.27. Now I strongly recommend going towards the tighter side of the clearance. Um, and the reason for that is, is that these are prone to having these rockers kick out and having it a little bit tighter will prevent that. 
Additionally, uh, it reduces your chances of having valve ticking noises, uh, which people might complain about. But it is important that you don't go tighter than the actual spec, because as the valves wear in, it could get tighter and you'll end up with a misfire. So in a perfect world, we're going to hope that 0.13 fits in here, which it does, but it feels a little bit loose. We're going to check the next one as well. 0.13 is tight on that one. So we're going to step up to the next size is a 0 0.15. 0 0.15 also goes through. But 0.18 does not. The 0.15 is pretty loose, so we're going to around here. And I am going to guess that we're probably right around 0.17. So now we'll go ahead and write here what we measured is a... 0.17 and the next valve we measured was a 0 0.05 so this valve is too tight and this valve is too loose so we'll make these adjustments afterwards we're gonna go through we're gonna measure every single valve. unfortunately the next two valves are so tight we can't get any feeler gauges in between them so we're gonna have to pull these rollers back out and put in smaller shims and measure again there's a couple ways you can go about doing this uh, if you're going to be changing a bunch of the shims, it's probably easiest just to pull the cams back off. But if you just need to do one, you can depress the valve just like that and pop that rocker out and change the shim. For a little wider view there, again, we have a striker hammer or pry bar right above here. And we just real gently pop it out. And what that's doing is it's just depressing the valve enough for that to slide out of there. Now I need to pull the smaller shims from the exhaust side off. So you'll notice I had a 218 and a 220 on the exhaust side. We're gonna wanna move those over to the intake uh, because the exhaust side has a little wider clearance. The angle of approach on the rockers on the exhaust side is a little bit different. We're going to take our striker hammer and we're going to tap it right here again very gently and it'll pop right out of there. So I moved my shims and adjusted my notes to represent the shim that is currently on the valve. Reinstalling the rocker, not that difficult. You get it in place, firmly push it in, make sure it's fully seated on your valve shim and seated on your pivot on the back side. So again, you saw that really didn't take much force. Um, that may be the reason that they're having problems with, uh, with these popping out sometimes. Again, push in, push in, right there. Again, we'll take a slightly different approach on the exhaust side. We're gonna slide the rocker in from the inside and it's very important that you make sure that your rocker is over the top of the valve. In this one we're going to get out our striker hammer again. We're going to give it just a very slight nudge and it's in place. Again we'll take our striker with our rocker arm perfectly lined up and on top of the valve. It goes right into place. Now, after trying uh, various shim options, I was able to get measurements for all of the cylinders. So now we need to do our math to get within spec. And I'll just show you on one here how this is going to work. So we are looking for a target of 0.13 as our clearance, but we measured 0.17. So we need to uh, close the gap by about four hundredths of a millimeter. So we need a larger shim than this. So a 2.14 should bring us right to 0.13. Now I like to err on the side of being a little bit tight. So I'm going to suggest that we use a 2.16 shim on this one. Now we're going to go through and do the calculations for every single one to find out what shim we're going to put on those. You're going to want to do this for both heads, and once you've figured out what shim you think you need for every single one, that's when you're going to need to source some shims. 
Uh, if you have access to a scrapyard with core motors, it'd be a good idea to pull some of these to build yourself an assortment because Subaru does not sell an assortment. They sell these in singles. And so you have to call the dealer with your list and order all your singles for all the sizes you've measured and hope they fit. A lot of times you'll get them in there and find out you're off and you need to do a different one. So you're going to want to order a couple sizes up and a couple sizes down. But at the end of the day, you want to have a pretty decent assortment. Um, at 10 bucks a piece, uh, plan on spending a little bit of money. Um, I made this organizer and ordered a few. Obviously, I'm not even close to a full set here, um, but I feel like I have enough to get where I need to get. That's pretty much the gist of how to do the valve adjustment on these. It's a lot of work. It's not the easiest way in the world, uh, but this is what uh, Subaru has given us, and so this is what we have to do. After some finagling around, uh, we've been able to get all the valves on both sides adjusted within the proper specification. Um, I should note that in the case of almost every single valve, we did have to um, change out the pucks a couple of times uh, to get it into the right specification. So it's really important that you have yourself a good assortment or you're going to be ordering parts and waiting for port parts. Um, that collection of valve pucks that I have there took about a week for all of those to come in when I ordered them. So keep that in mind when you're starting this job.